Welcome to my documentary explaining my photographic practice. I will give you a briefing on the background to explain how I got to my current situation. I was born into a Royal Air Force family, my father being a Royal Air Force policeman. I have always been around our air bases and aircraft to form the visual and audible background to my life story. Unsurprisingly, therefore, I have a great affection for military aircraft and my early photographic activities included many aircraft and family photographs. My father was a trained photographer in the course of his career as a counterintelligence operator in the military. He was trained in basic photography, surveillance photography and evidential photography. My earliest memories of photography are of my father taking photographs on his own film camera. I bought a camera when I was about 18, 19, maybe 20, and started snapping away myself without any real form of training. The demands of adulting took over when my daughter Jade was born, and photography was then mainly limited to documenting Jade growing up. So fast forward to eight years ago, 2015. After several years of systemic pain and reduced mobility, I was diagnosed with chronic osteoarthritis. I decided that I needed to do something to make me move more, so I decided to take up photography once again. My interest expanded into sports photography, becoming the unofficial team photographer for my wife's various ladies' rugby teams, and I became the resident photographer at the local park run each Saturday. I also got introduced to studio photography, doing headshots, model portfolios, and so on. Lately, my interest in photography has been centred around landscape photography, and it's in this area that I decided to explore in this module. My wife and I decided to incorporate the module into a planned holiday in Ireland. It was a kill several birds with one stone exercise, as we planned the holiday to include visiting my in-laws who live in Cavan, with some touring and photography, culminating visiting with and supporting my sister-in-law, who was running a mental health awareness event in Cork. As an experiment in sustainable practice, we did not plan specific locations to photograph, but decided to photograph what we came across in our travels. By doing so, we expended no extra fuel or resource in progressing photography for the module. What we came across was a number of derelict properties by the roadside. Most were on private land behind gates, fences or other barriers and had to be photographed from the roadside. The results are on the following pages. As a result of this module, I'm now much more cognizant of issues regarding sustainability in photography and have made several changes to my practice. The biggest change really is in terms of printing. I now print far less than I used to. I print draft quality materials more often just to check composition and fit. And I only resort to printing on high quality paper if I have to print an item and only at the last stage when I'm happy that everything else is correct. In terms of the actual printer, my last printer broke, a piece um, broke off internally, it was um, unrepairable, so I had to replace my printer. I did so by purchasing an Epson Eco tank, where ink is contained with individual tanks for each colour, rather than using replaceable cartridges. This basically means that I'm not using cartridges now, which are very plastic intensive and a waste of resource. The Eco tank is far more economical and therefore uh, represents a major step forward in sustainability. Another major change to my photographic activity and approach is in the area of travel. Whereas previously I would make a specific journey to a location to take pictures, I now rely more upon opportunistic approaches to photography by making sure I have my camera, tripod and cable release with me everywhere I go and can then react accordingly to any opportunities that do present themselves I would, of course, still make specific journeys to conduct specific photographic shoots dependent upon location or event, but will also now much more rely upon opportunities that present themselves as I stumble across them rather than planned events. One of the areas in which we as modern photographers are incredibly rich is in the abundance of excellent photographers who have gone before us and from whom we can draw inspiration. There are famous photographers in every genre. Helmut Newton, for example, is my favourite fashion photographer, but I also admire the works of several others. Donovan, Bailey, Parkinson, Beaton, Leibovitz, Lindbergh. In landscapes, I adore the work of Sebastio Salgado, Ansel Adams, Don McCullin, Michael Kenner, Takeshi Mizukoshi, and various other also in the landscape genre. I've looked at various books of their works to see whether any of their approaches were relevant to my current work and came to the conclusion that they were not. Of much more relevance was the work of Berndt and Hiller Becher and Ed Ruscher. 
the Beckers and Rouget utilised a very direct, pragmatic and industrial approach to their photography, ignoring surrounding landscape and concentrating on the central subject. This is the approach that I took in the module. In this way, I removed any romanticism of the subject, just showing the derelict buildings in their own setting and relying upon their own raw beauty. One difference in approach to Rouget or the Beckers that I did utilise was the use of colour photography. Colour photography delivered more detail and a much more visually appealing aesthetic. These images were shot recently along the wild West Atlantic Way in Ireland and consist of abandoned farmhouses, churches and an English Martello fort. My research also led me to some modern photographers who specialise in urban exploration or urbex photography. One such photographer is Christian Richter who started photographing derelict buildings and abandoned buildings when he was in his teens in Germany. The collapse of the Berlin Wall in 1989 signified the reunification of Germany which then facilitated travel across the wider nation which quickly proved and revealed the stark contrast between the former communist East Germany and the former capitalist West Germany. East Germany was much less developed, more run down than West Germany, with many dilapidated and derelict buildings. This gave West German photographers many more opportunities to photograph such installations, and several young photographers became specialists in such urbex photography. Urbex photography usually involves the accessing of the interior of abandoned buildings, however this is usually bound by own capabilities due to my disability and reduced mobility. As the buildings are usually boarded up and secured against unauthorised access, urbex photographers normally have to effectively break into these premises and they are usually at least trespassers in the eyes of UK law. I therefore had to content myself with photographing locations from the outside. So in this module I adapted some of the ideas I've observed from people like the Beckers and Ed Rouché. I adapted their black and white photography in using colour photography to get a better aesthetic effect, but I've used their technique of uh, isolating the subject in the middle of the image and not surrounding it by broad landscapes to highlight what they're actually looking at. I've taken away some key lessons from this module and indeed from the previous modules. One of the key lessons messages is that of sustainability and that we are all custodians of our planet and we have a responsibility to safeguard those resources. The other key lesson is to really think about what we're doing, come up with imaginative and new solutions to do things and protect our resources that way, but also to reach a wider audience. Be creative in how we get our messages and our images out there and how they are seen and accessed by the public.